Hello and welcome to Crusader Kings 3. I'm Lionheart X10 and today we're going to be checking out the legends of Crusader Kings 3. Today we'll be checking out Duke Robert and I'll be showing you guys how to get started with the martial lifestyle focus, meaning we'll be looking to raise our armies and march to war. Sure, fancy words and diplomacy is great and intrigue and cunning and schemes is pretty awesome, but nothing quite beats marching to war and conquering your foes with martial might. We'll get to see this all in action with Duke Robert as he's been reworked to be more focused towards the martial lifestyle. We won't be touching too much on the wider mechanics of the game, so don't worry if you see any icons or menus that you don't quite understand yet. Today, the aim is to take Duke Robert and become a king. So, let our adventure begin. So, here we are at the start of our Duke Robert adventure. We start as Duke of Apulia in southern Italy, and our aim for today, can it give us a little bit of a mini objective to strive for, is going to be to try and become a king. And I guess we might as well try and become king of Sicily, as that's the nearest kingdom to where we start. Quick little overview of what we'll need to do in order to create this kingdom is we'll need to own nine counties, of the region which we already do which is great we'll need 500 gold and we'll need two duchy titles now we already hold one duchy title so we'll just need to conquer another one and conquest is gonna be the name of the game today but first of all let's have a quick look at duke robert the fox to start with he's cunning shrewd and ambitious your virtues may not be chivalrous but they are effective that's all we need. Now look at that. He's an exalted warlord. That is the best martial education trait in the game for a martial character. Essentially, this means he is an expert in the art of war, and that's reflected in the stats. In terms of our martial stat, we've got 24 to start with, which, as you can see, the game thinks is excellent, and I agree. Now, there's lots of different icons and things we can click on, but the main one we want to start with is this one, No Lifestyle Chosen. And it's pretty easy which one we're going to go for today, Martial. Now, we've already got a bonus to this because we are that exalted warlord. So as you can see, Duke Robert at the age of 51 has already spent a good chunk of his life learning all he needs to know about being a kick-ass commander. So Marshall is divided into three sections. Strategist, which essentially gives you lots of buffs and bonuses for your army um, for defeating your foes. Overseer is all about um, management of your troops at home and giving you better control over your lands once you've conquered them. And Gallant is all about improving your knights. There's also a few bonuses in there for uh, romancing um, the ladies of your court because who doesn't love a Gallant knight? Across those three core uh, pillars, you can essentially tailor your martial character how you'd like and also to suit the specifics of your own campaign. Do you need a great strategist to increase and buff your army? Do you need to better control your home territory and counties that you conquer? Or do you want to improve your knights that will essentially act as your kind of captains and sub-commanders during battles to give you an advantage over your foes? Over on the left, we have a specific focus, again, broken down to support our character's playstyle and what we actually want to achieve in a specific moment. For now, we're just going to go for the strategy focus because we want all the martial we can possibly get. So we're going to lock that in there and as time progresses, we'll gain more experience and we'll be able to then come back and spend a perk point in one of the trees. But we'll come back to that later. Now, we won't go too much into a lot of the other mechanics in the game, but in terms of the resources along the top bar here, the main one for us to keep an eye on today is our monthly income and the amount of gold we have, because we'll need that not only to pay for our armies, but also to eventually create the Kingdom of Sicily. We need that 500 gold. Speaking of spending money, we're going to go on over to the right-hand side to our military tab, uh, which is the cross swords and shield icon 
and we're going to take a look at men at arms before we do though a brief breakdown of your army composition there are three elements to your army levies knights and men at arms levies are essentially your peasants and your workers your farmhands uh, you can quickly raise them in times of war they're not professional soldiers though they're literally just grabbing whatever tools they can and quickly forming up into a fighting force your knights are your vassals or your courtiers and they fight directly in your armies now they have a specific stat called prowess which we can see here on duke robert and that essentially is their fighting ability in duels and battles you want your knights to have high prowess to effectively support your armies your levies and your men at arms now men at arms these are your professional soldiers these guys are much better than levies and you can choose specifically what type of men at arms regiment you want to create across a mixed range of infantry, uh, missile troops, siege weapons and cavalry. And there are some other unique ones as well. We're going to treat ourselves to some lovely armoured footmen. We can see that they've got a decent amount of damage, toughness and a little bit of screening. You can hover over each of these to clearly see what they all do. But essentially, all we're bothered about is the amount of damage they do and that they're pretty tough for today. They'll start with five out of 100 soldiers. So we'll need to give them a little bit of time uh, once the game starts, once we unpause in a moment uh, to let them build up and then we'll take them into the field. We can also see that we've got um, some bowmen. We've got 300 of them. We've got some mangonels and we've got some pikemen. All of those should be pretty useful in us waging war. We probably should quickly have a look to see who our marshal is. So on the right hand side, we want to go to our council and see who our marshal character is. It's Count Roger, everybody's favorite brother. I mean, plus two, uh, plus 22 opinion. Everybody's brother that's kind of OK. We, we send him a Christmas card. So he is currently acting as our marshal. As our marshal, he'll be our chief commander and in charge of military matters. We can choose to increase control in a county that we've newly conquered or one of our existing ones if they've recently been raided or if there's been a pesky peasant uprising. But all of our regions are currently at maximum control, so we don't need to worry about that. Then we can choose if we want to to train commanders. That will help improve our knights and make them more effective as well as our men at arms or we can just leave him organizing the army which will improve the rate at which our levies uh, reinforce and replenish and that's what we'll leave him on now one more thing we can do with our men at arms to make them more effective is to station them within one of our holdings our holdings being the lands that we own and directly control now that we've stationed our bowmen at our capital at Tranai, we'll also station our pikemen and we'll pop them down in Rosano. That will give them a little bit additional damage and additional toughness. Finally, it's time to unpause the game and see what occurs. So as the game plays out, various events and interesting interactions with other characters around the map will fire. And it will be how we interact with them that will help us shape our playthrough and see uh, what deeds we can achieve. And here we go, our first dilemma. A Norman Sicily. Life as a duke is preferable to life of a bandit, but life as a king would suit me better. Duke Robert has high aspirations and is rather ambitious. Did we forget to mention that Duke Robert is rather ambitious? He is the fox after all. By the grace of God and St. Peter, I rule Apulia and Calabria. But with the grace of a few old friends from my days as a highwayman, I could rule the entirety of the kingdom of Sicily, no matter what the Pope or the Emperor thinks. So in this dilemma, we've got three choices. We can choose to get pressed claims. Now, claims essentially mean you have a right to go and conquer that territory. There's various ways you can create and generate claims which we won't worry about too much today. Uh, but essentially, this first option is offering us two press claims, meaning that we can fire them off straight away and march to war immediately on two new duchies. We'll also gain an army of, of 750 men at our capital, uh, but it will upset the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope. We can choose to stay out of the empire 
and instead only get one of the duchy claims and an army of 500 men. That way we only upset the Pope, but we keep the Emperor largely on our side. Or we can say that we're a little bit intimidated by both the Pope and the Emperor and they can keep all their lands, but I would still get a little bit of a special army of 250 men. But Duke Robert is bold. He's the fox, so he's going to say everything is his and all of it and more shall be mine. So we now have a special army. If we go to our military tab, we can see we've now got special soldiers, Norman highwaymen, three groups of 250 each. These each come with their own unique little groups of men at arms, which will help us um, in our wars yet to come. So by choosing to take those press claims against the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, we can now see we have a whole host of claims on our character tab. And this is going to make it much easier for us to go about conquering. You can see we can grab pretty much all the lands of the Kingdom of Sicily at will. In order to wage war, all we need to do is select a county that we want to go and take, left click on the character and then right click on them uh, for the character that owns the county and we can choose to declare war. If we have any valid claims, which we do now, we can then choose that claim and choose to declare war. Now, we don't need any allies for this, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to secure those alliances uh, early on. So we're just going to come to the situation notifications button because that is trying to remind me that I can negotiate some alliances. Always check in on this every so often as it will have some helpful notifications on various activities and actions that you can take within your game. This is telling me that we have six alliances that we can negotiate. Mostly, I would imagine these are family members, yep, cousins that we can call upon to aid us. So we'll just negotiate the alliance. They're all willing to accept all of those. They'll be useful just in case our enemy suddenly decides to enact a few alliances of their own. Now, obviously, there are several ways in which you can get alliances within the game, uh, either through negotiating with family or through marriage. Now, we won't go into it too much, but I think it would be worth just seeing if our eldest daughter could marry someone for a nice, tasty alliance. So we'll choose Find Spouse. And then on this tab, we'll choose to sort by alliance power. So we can see by selecting him, we've got an alliance showing up um, with the Duchy of Bohemia. 3,201. Let's send the proposal. We'll unpause the game and let those new alliances just pop through. Everybody wants to be our friend and to honor our call of alliance. It's time to wage bloody war. <laughs> and as you can see, our strength has now gone from 2,200 to 7,200 with all the allies that we can call to our aid. Let's declare war. So congrats, we've now declared war. Our enemy will soon start mustering their own troops and we're going to want to do the same. In order to muster troops, we can either hit the raise all armies button at the bottom right of the screen or we can go to our military tab, go to our rally point section and create a new rally point. Rally points are where you'll be able to raise troops and as your empire grows, you'll want to have several rally points across the map to more quickly and efficiently raise troops. So we're going to pop a rally point here so that they're nice and close to the new territory that we want to go and conquer. Then all we need to do is click on the rally point and choose raise all here. So we right click on their castle and in our army marches. Now their army is likely just going to stay put as they want to try and defend their castle, but it's not looking good for them. The battle begins and we get a breakdown of how the battle's going. So we've won the battle and defeated the army that was guarding the castle and we've now begun our siege of Salerno. We have won. We've hit a hundred percent on our little war score down here. The war score is essentially a ticking tracker of how the war is going. We'll enforce our demands. We get a load of bonuses, more prestige, more legitimacy, and our enemy is humiliated. There we go. Now that we've won the war, we don't need our troops raised anymore. We can expand them and we'll just zoom out and you can see that we now have the county of Salerno under our control. It's still owned by the previous ruler that we went to war with, but he now bends the knee to the glorious Duke Robert the Fox. And with that victory, we now have our two duchy titles. So all we need now in order to form the Kingdom of Sicily 
is 500 gold. We now have enough gold to create our kingdom, the kingdom of Sicily. So let us become a glorious king. There we go. You are now a mighty king, King Robert the Fox of Sicily. Hopefully we've covered uh, the broad strokes of what you'll need to do in order to wage brutal but successful war in Crusader Kings 3. Remember to invest in your men at arms, creating new ones and increasing their size to better support your levies. Remember to check through your knights so that you can get powerful warriors to improve your effectiveness in battle. And don't be shy making some powerful alliances, either through family or marriage, to better support your claims and empower your own forces. Until the next one, take care and ciao for now.